Hey guys, welcome to episode number 239. Today is another special weekend episode and we are at the fish hatchery. I've been volunteering here for the past three months or so and I thought it was about time to show you guys around, uh, show you a couple tips and tricks that these guys are using to raise large amounts of fish and uh, just kind of walk through what we've got going on here. Um, this tank is actually pretty much empty right now. Uh, we'll go find the fish that were in here previously. Uh, but we do, what we do have up here is quite a bit of plumbing. And uh, we have two sources of water. Uh, one is from a well and another is from the brook. And uh, those go over um, a media pad and then into the water. Uh, and these are cement troughs. They hold quite a bit of water, um, and the water kind of flows all the way down here to the end until we get to um, the overflow. And we've got a standpipe in there. You can put a different height standpipe in, and you'll get a different uh, water level uh, in, that, in that tank. Uh, as you can see, we have several of these tanks going on here. Uh, but the only ones with a lot of fish in them are these two here. And these are actually uh, baby salmon. Um, these guys are probably somewhere between 30 and 40 weeks old. Um, they're feeding on commercial food now. Uh, they started on uh, live brine shrimp. Uh, but this is one of the first little things that I wanted to show you guys. This is actually a fish feeder. And it's a pretty ingenious design. This is actually an outdoor light timer. If you can see this box here, this is a light timer. You see the numbers there. And uh, what they did was they attached a piece of uh, uh, clear material here, plexiglass, uh, in a circle to that timer, allowing this to rotate uh, once a day. And uh, with these fins, on top of that, what it does is it empties whatever food is sprinkled on top here into the water, but at a very slow rate. Um, so if you sprinkle food uh, from here all the way to over here, you ensure that you're getting a steady supply of food uh, fed into this tank all day long. And so that'll just kind of drop into the tank and those fish will feed on that all day long. Pretty cool design, uh, pretty simple to construct. And uh, as you can see by the number of fish in here, uh, it's a pretty successful uh, little tool for uh, raising these fish. Um, they're pretty skittish. They're not going to come up to the top even if I feed them. So this is probably about the best picture that I'm going to get in the low light uh, of these fish. But uh, they're pretty cool. They're doing well. As you can see here, we've got the, uh, the water inlets again. And we've got the two sources of water running uh, through those pads. So this is the uh, this is the room where all of the uh, the baby fish are born and uh, raised up to a large enough size until they can go outdoors uh, into the large ponds. And while I'm here, I want to show you guys one other neat little trick um, that they use to feed these fish. This is a chicken waterer and uh, this is the base of the chicken waterer and each one of these has a different rate on it for milliliters per hour and essentially uh, what they do is they cook up uh, a few gallons of brine shrimp at a time and uh, then they fill this container with brine shrimp, live brine shrimp, uh, tip this over, hook it up and then just let it sit over the edge of their tank. Um, and what happens is the chicken water has one tiny hole. You can see it there. And uh, that's basically going to be dripping water uh, for you know, a period of time. It might be an hour or two. It might be longer. Dripping water very slowly into the tank to feed those brine shrimp over time. Uh, and because this is a flow through system, the amount of salt water that's entering the tank is negligible. It doesn't really matter. Um, so they can drip as many of those chicken waterers into the tanks uh, as they want. Uh, this in here 
is the boiler room. Uh, it's kind of dark right now, but this is actually a project that I just set up. Um, here we have some uh, five or six gallon uh, brine shrimp hatching jars. Uh, they're empty right now because they're not hatching brine shrimp in this building, but I just set up this uh, 10 gallon tank and it's very foggy. Sorry for the focus. Um, you're not going to be able to see a whole lot in here. Uh, but what we do in, have in here is uh, some mosquito larvae that are up there. And they're just kind of hitchhikers. Uh, but we also have some Daphnia in here. Uh, I'll try to get a better picture at a different time of the Daphnia. But uh, the reason this water is cloudy is because it has some yeast. It has some spirulina uh, powder in it. And um, that's what we're using to feed um, those Daphnia. So hoping to get a pretty good culture set up in here, indoors. Um, the reason there are mosquito larvae in here is because we originally tried to set up the culture outdoors and the mosquitoes were just kind of taking over. So I'm hoping after a week or two what we'll have in here is mostly Daphnia. We can raise those up, um, get this culture going real good, and then transfer that outside. Uh, so without further ado, Let's head outside and we can take a look at what we've got going on in the ponds. So out here uh, we have several greenhouses that uh, house all of the ponds. And uh, again, these are very large uh, broodstock ponds, uh, concrete in the ground. They've got the center um, drain in the middle and uh, you've got like a three inch uh, water line main for each one of these tanks and essentially what happens is the water drains through the middle there and underneath here it gets piped over to um, this which is an overflow uh, so you'll see the water is actually coming out through there uh, it's going into this uh, tray here and then uh, it's spilling over um, and this is a flow through system but uh, the reason this screen is here is because there are some shad uh, which are laying eggs and this is the screen which would catch those eggs uh, if there were eggs that were being laid however uh, I believe they're just about done with their spawning um, so there won't be very many eggs left. Uh, all of these tanks here are empty at the moment, but if we head over here we can see um, some adult fish and uh, these are what are left of the American Shad that are spawning um, and their central overflow is uh, what was connected to what we just saw uh, with that screen. So, pretty big fish, very strong swimmers, uh, but they are very finicky. Um, so, we gotta try not to scare them. The water level is running very high in this tank. We don't want them to jump out or get spooked because they're supposed to be spawning right now. Uh, but these are adult fish, and uh, after their spawn, most of them will die, the rest will be returned to the wild. I guess that's just what happens. They don't eat for a number of months uh, while they're spawning and it's just a very stressful thing for them to do. Um, so the good thing is um, there were three of these ponds which were set up with adult fish that were spawning and uh, two of those ponds uh, have finished spawning and these guys are just about done spawning and um, that's all good. Uh, several million eggs were collected and most of those have actually already hatched. Uh, we'll go take a look at what is hatching uh, in a few minutes but I just wanted to walk through the rest of the back here so we can check out what's going on. Um, this whole facility at one point was pretty much a hundred percent stocked and uh, it was primarily salmon um, that was being grown here. This is actually a, a green tank right now and there's a bunch of stuff in it. 
Uh, this is just kind of a sample of the dirty, dirty water uh, in there. And there are a lot of mosquito larvae. There are some Daphnia growing, some larger species, some smaller species. But uh, it's always fun to have a few tanks set up that are just growing stuff. Uh, so you can see what see what's growing. Uh, over here is actually where we're hoping to uh, to raise the Daphnia uh, at a little bit larger of a scale. Uh, it's kind of on standstill right now until we get a good culture going. Uh, but these are six foot by six foot uh, by two foot or three foot tanks and uh, they have the center drain again and then we've got the overflow over here uh, we've got some water mains over there uh, so we can fill these up and drip water in uh, they got a little bit of an air stone to keep a little bit of current going uh, and right now these are just completely full of mosquitoes I'll try to get you in as close to the water as I can most of everything currently in these tanks uh, are just mosquitoes because we are outdoors um, so that's primarily what's going to grow out here but uh, we're hoping with enough Daphnia growing and enough green water growing uh, we'll be able to uh, transfer those Daphnia out here and start growing them on a bigger scale obviously it's not an ideal setup uh, for Daphnia but uh, it's better than nothing so we're going with what we got, we're going to learn along the way and see if we can grow up some of those Daphnia uh, to use in the fish room, uh, but also to feed to uh, some of the smaller fish uh, here at the hatchery. Um, now in this tank we have some shad. Uh, you can see a few of them there on the bottom. Again, this tank is really dirty uh, because this is something of a little experiment. Uh, but these fish have been in here for about a year and uh, they've grown but not a whole lot. Uh, they should be two or three times this big by now. Uh, but they're basically just eating whatever lands in this tank. Uh, not really feeding them a whole lot. There is uh, some food here. Um, but they're basically just surviving on their own there. Um, here we have some adult salmon, very beautiful fish. Um, these guys get fed um, quite a bit and uh, this food is pretty big uh, and these guys I'm sure are very hungry. So these are kelts, salmon kelts. Uh, they're full grown adult fish and uh, I believe these guys are the ones that produced all of those fish that you saw in the hatchery. Uh, so they're just chilling out here because they're done spawning. Uh, I believe they will remain here through the winter uh, and they might spawn again next year. But for right now, uh, they're just hanging out back here and they have a giant appetite for these giant pellets. Well, we'll see if we can get some to feed right up here. We can get some good, some good footage of them real quick. Very beautiful fish. Uh, if you go to the store and buy salmon, this is pretty much what you're buying. Um, these fish have been raised uh, in captivity basically their whole lives and uh, they're full grown. So pretty cool, pretty exciting stuff. They do have uh, a fence here to make sure they don't jump but again they've got the central overflow um, which keeps them inside. Uh, I'm gonna shut the camera off and then we're gonna head over to another building real quick and we'll wrap up this video. All right, and this is the shad building. Uh, this is where all of the baby shad are being hatched. And uh, you'll notice we have a water line 
uh, that's kind of makeshift rigged up along the ceiling, uh, which enters into this uh, filter stack, um, which then is gravity fed down into this large pond. And there are some fish in here. We'll take a look at them in a little bit. But first, I wanted to show you what's going on back here. Uh, because this is probably the most interesting part uh, of what's going on in this building. Uh, what we have here are like 20 or 30 gallon um, roto molded uh, containers, brine shrimp uh, containers, and uh, we are hatching pounds and pounds of baby brine shrimp uh, to feed these shad fry uh, as they're hatching out of their eggs. And so when these brine shrimp hatch, what is happening is they're being placed into this five gallon bucket here. And you'll see it's just about empty right now. It gets refilled several times per day. And uh, what's happening is uh, we have two peristaltic pumps. Uh, you'll see the, the peristaltic action uh, in that chamber there, which is pumping the liquid and the brine shrimp from this five gallon bucket up through these tubes uh, and distributes them through manifolds uh, with, with flow uh, switches to all of these tanks here, these uh, four foot um, tanks. So let's go take a look at what are in these tanks. Um, all of these are hooked up again to a flow through system. Um, the water is coming in through that water main and then it's uh, going through uh, the center standpipe here which has a screen mesh over it uh, and then all of that water is dumping here uh, in the middle into the drain. And uh, what we have here are shad fry and they look a little bit like mosquito larvae uh, or they might look a little bit like baby eels uh, but they are indeed fish fry and they are very long very narrow and pretty much see-through uh, when they're first hatched and these are probably a week or two old at this point and uh, they stay pretty small for a while and uh, when they get fed they will grow and they will grow fast but they are very finicky so we do have a very low flow here you'll see the water is coming in there and uh, you'll see by all of these guys swimming very slowly that this whole tank is just has a little bit of a current to it a little bit of a flow going around the edge and so these fish will feed and they will grow in this tank um, we have the, the water manifolds here, we have the, uh, the brine shrimp um, peristaltic pump flow here uh, to feed these tanks and uh, when those fish are large enough they will be transferred over into that big pond um, where we started. So we'll go take a look at what these fish look like when they get a little bit bigger. Um, let's see if I can find Oh, here we go. Uh, this is an egg tumbler. Uh, those shad, when they lay their eggs and they get caught in that big overflow screen, uh, they get counted and then they end up over here. And this is the end of the end. And a lot of this is junk. Uh, all of the white eggs on the top are dead. Uh, this is basically um, the last half of a container full of eggs. Uh, left to hatch here um, and it might, no, it might not look like a lot but uh, that's um, several thousand eggs tens of thousands of eggs and uh, as you can see by what they look like uh, when they get in these tanks it's just a complete swarm but what's going on is we have a very low flow of water coming in through here and uh, that pipe goes all the way down to the bottom and it expels its water at the bottom which kind of shoots uh, the eggs that are on the bottom up towards uh, the top of this tumbler and what happens is the water um, 
then travels at the top and spills over uh, into this tank. And it's got a little bit of a lip to it, so if there were any eggs uh, that were making their way up to the top of the water, they'd hit that and they'd uh, go back down. And only the water and the hatched fish would then swim up over this top uh, and spill over into this tank. So when uh, these were in full production uh, before the, the eggs had hatched, there were five or six of these egg tumblers attached to each one of these four foot tanks. And all of those fish have hatched. Some of them have been transported uh, away to be raised elsewhere. And uh, what's remaining uh, are in these tanks here. But um, that's about it for these guys. Let's go take a look at um, what the shad look like when they're a little bit bigger. Uh, they're still eating baby brine shrimp, but we're hoping to move them to some daphnia and some uh, commercial fish food pretty soon. Um, but they tend to hang out over here because, again, we have a peristaltic pump. We've got a brine shrimp mixture in there, uh, live brine shrimp, and uh, that's constantly being pumped through here. Um, into this tank. Um, so it's kind of hard to see with the glare, but what we have here are shad. They're a little bit bigger. They actually start to look like fish at this point, and uh, they've kind of taken shape. They're still very long and very narrow, uh, but as you can see, they're very speedy swimmers, uh, very strong swimmers. And so they like the flow that they're getting here, and uh, they like the fact that they're getting fed. So uh, there's the water that's coming in, and then here's the food that's coming in. And so the, the strongest swimmers, you'll see, are going to hang out right here, where this is dripping into the water. And um, then the rest will kind of trail back around there. And again, we have the central, um, we have the central drain in the middle. But most of these fish will stay towards the edges with this flow going. So no one will really end up on the bottom and no one will really end up in the middle there. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, we have some air stones going as well to keep this nice and aerated. But anyways guys, that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, very exciting. Lots to do. Lots to look at. I've been helping out with the maintenance, with the feeding, with the cleaning. Um, and uh, everything in between. So I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I spend like six to eight hours here every other weekend and uh, I've been doing it for the last three months or so uh, as I've said. So sorry this has been a long video. Uh, I know it's a lot to absorb um, but if you have any specific questions or if you want me to focus on anything in particular that you might have seen or thought you saw uh, along the way in this video, let me know and I'll shoot a future video uh, from the fish hatchery. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.